If you're like me, you probably save all of these plastic grocery bags so that you can recycle them and use them for other things. Longtime friend of the show, Tim Sluter, suggested I make a dispenser for these bags. I decided to go a step further. I figured since the bags are being recycled, I would use recycled wood. This is all made from pallet wood. And I've added two hooks on the side so you can hook one of the bags to it to use as a trash bag. This would be perfect for a laundry room. The reason this one is in my shop is because it's only here temporarily. I decided I'm gonna start auctioning off some of my projects. I have way too much stuff. If you'd like to own this dispenser, you can place a bid on it. Please check in the description on how you can get involved. I'm gonna donate 100% of the winning bid to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, an organization that helps out children who could sure use a little bit of brightness in their lives. I'm gonna clean up these slats a little bit with a few light passes through my thickness planer. That gives me some nice looking boards, but they still retain some of that rustic character. I'm cutting these thinner strips slightly oversized so I can glue them all together for the front and back panel. I'm going to glue the edges of all of these boards together and clamp them up in these pipe clamps. This board has packing tape on it and it's going to help keep everything flat. The trick here is to tighten up these clamps just a little, not too much that the boards are just going to pop out. Then I can take another board that I've covered with packing tape and sandwich these all together. The packing tape just keeps the glue from sticking to the wood. Now I can begin to tighten the pipe clamps a little bit. They don't need to be really, really tight. Mostly I want to make sure this isn't bowing out in either direction. These only need a couple hours to dry, but I kind of got a late start today, so I'll just let them dry overnight. And good morning. You can tell it's morning because I have a different shirt on. And there's my front and back panels. And now I can sand off all this excess glue. I'm cutting the tops of the two side pieces at 20 degree angles. With a straight bit in my router, I can cut some rabbits along the edges of the sides and the bottom. Now I can cut these two panels down to size and square them up. Now I'm going to see if I can mark where to cut the sides. And I'll tilt my blade to a 20 degree angle. I'm using a 2 inch diameter Forstner bit for the two holes. And I'm rounding over the edges of that circle. Now I can glue all of the pieces together except for the top that I'm going to cut down to size once it's all assembled. Okay, it's been about an hour. I can take all the clamps off. Well, it's not a plastic bag dispenser. It could also be a birdhouse. The top of the box is slightly wider this way because it's at an angle. I'm going to make a hole in the center of it now. Then I'll round over these inside edges. These rabbits around the top will just drop right onto the edges. Since this overhang is so thin, rather than cut it at that 20 degree angle, I'm just going to sand it flush with the front. And with that dry now, I can sand everything flush. You can find these little shaker pegs at craft stores or online. And I'll put a mounting hole in the back to hang it on the wall. And you'll be able to access that hole through here. 
I took a sheet of shipping labels and I peeled off all of the labels and ran this through my inkjet printer to print out this image of the rose. The ink doesn't dry on this label material so I can transfer it right to the wood. Just gotta be careful I don't smear it. That gives me a pretty nice transfer. And I'm gonna carve out inside the lines using my Dremel tool. These are acrylic craft paints I'm using to paint the rose. With the paint dry, I can sand off all the high spots, leaving the paint in the valleys. And I'll seal this all with a few coats of spray lacquer. You guys already know how much I love Audible.com. I'm really hooked on the service. I listen to books all of the time while I'm working in my shop. I got a good one this week. You know what I've been listening to? I've been listening to William Shatner's Up Till Now. It's his autobiography. It's also the perfect type of audiobook because it's actually better than the written version because it's narrated by William Shatner himself. At one point in the book, you get to hear William Shatner doing a William Shatner impression. <laughs> It's pretty funny. And you certainly wouldn't get that in the printed version. And you get to hear him do a little bit of Rocket Man. I'm a Rocket Man! This is a man who is always challenging himself to do all sorts of new things. He's always been working and he has no intention of retiring. Years ago, my wife and I saw him performing with his wife in Love Letters in San Francisco. And we were sitting in the front row and we could actually see William Shatner spitting as he read his lines. I almost got spat on by William Shatner. And that's just one of thousands of books available at audible.com. They're great for listening to as you're working in your shop. And you can get started by downloading your own free book at audible.com slash woodworking. I really appreciate audible.com. I want to thank Bill Corey, a blacksmith, who sent me this really cool Woodworking for Mere Mortals branding iron. Well, I hope this project has inspired you to build something out of some reclaimed or reused lumber. It really has a lot of character to it. And I hope you like this project enough to consider bidding on it. Remember, 100% of the winning bid goes to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Check in the description for all of the details. Let's see if we can make a difference in at least one child's life. And if this is your first time here, welcome to Woodworking for Mere Mortals. I hope you will subscribe to my channel. I have new woodworking videos every Friday. Friday. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next week.